everyone, and thank you for joining us for our first Morning Mind session of Brain Awareness Week 2021. My name is Miss Denise, and this is Miss Brittany, and we are two of the leaders of MINDS, which stands for Mentoring in Neuroscience Discovery at Sinai. We are a community volunteer initiative based out of the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai, and our goal is to make neuroscience education engaging and accessible. So this week we have a bunch of programming which you can find on our calendar on our website, www.minds.mssm.edu, or we'll place it in the comment section below. Today, we are going to be learning about the brain. And the brain's job is to send, receive, and interpret messages from the rest of the body. And to do so, it is organized into different sections called lobes, which we're gonna dive into today. Our brain is constantly working and communicating with the rest of our body, allow, allowing us to feel different emotions and sleep and eat and do a bunch of different functions. In fact, the brain does this automatically, so we sometimes think that it's working behind the scenes and we forget that it's doing anything at all. The brain can achieve these activities by sending neural messages to the rest of the body, just like how we send letters to our friends or our family. These messages are sent through our spinal cord and nerves, which together make up our nervous system. Our spinal cord runs down the length of our back and nerves exit at different points so that we can communicate with our toes, hands, arms, and legs. You can think of the nervous system just like the New York City subway system. Trains carry people to one part of the city to another, just like nerves carry messages from one part of the body to another. For example, let's say that our friend is about to throw us a baseball. We know that we should catch this ball. So what our brain does is we send a message down our spinal cord, through our arm, and to our hand, allowing us to catch that ball so we can grab it. But this is really only half the story. Our brain can send messages to many different parts of our body, and it receives messages about things that we hear, see, smell, and taste, and touch in this environment around us. For example, let's say we pick up an ice cube. Our first thought might be, wow, this feels cold, but where did that thought actually come from? And it was actually generated out in our hand. So we have nerves in our hand that send information about the texture, the weight, and the temperature of that ice cube through our arm, up our spinal cord, and to our brain so that it produces that thought of, wow, this is cold. So in order to achieve all of these functions, like walking, talking, remembering, and again, most everything we do, our brain is organized into different sections called lobes. And overall, you can see here that we have four main lobes, the temporal lobe, frontal lobe, parietal lobe, and occipital lobe. So today we're gonna to talk about the functions of each of these lobes, but it's always important to remember that the lobes are constantly communicating with each other to get the job done. First up, we have the temporal lobe, which is located right behind our ears. And it's important for allowing us to hear and interpret sound, like a siren on the street or a friend talking to us. The temporal lobe is also really important for memory, uh, like events from our childhood or remembering a general fact. And we know this because of a critical patient called HM. What happened was HM was having a bunch of seizures and his surgeons decided to remove a part of his temporal lobe to make the seizures go away. And he wasn't able to form new memories after the surgery. So doctors concluded that this part of the brain is really, really important for memory and storing things that we experience. Next up, we have the occipital lobe, which is located right here at the back of our brain. And the job of the occipital lobe is to interpret things that we see. So it's part of our visual system. Now, have you ever bumped the back of your head and seen stars, so to speak? Well, this is actually because you are applying pressure to tissues in your occipital lobe when you bump your head, causing cells in our brain to randomly fire, and we interpret this as a pattern in the sky that is very similar to what stars look like. So that's where that expression came from. Next, we have the frontal lobe, located right behind our forehead. The frontal lobe is important for us to plan higher order functioning, feel emotions, plan for the future, and much, much more. We can think of this lobe as a superhero because it helps us to solve problems. But overall, this lobe is super important for involving higher order functioning and cognitive functions. 
Last but not least, we have the parietal lobe, which is located here at the back middle section of your brain. And the parietal lobe allows us to sense temperature, touch, and body position. So it's helpful for allowing us to figure out if we are sitting down, standing up, or leaning over. So if I start to lean from one side, my parietal lobe will sense that and communicate with other lobes to help me stand back upright. So if we put all these lobes together, we get our brain and the great things that it allows us to do. But like we mentioned earlier, even though each brain lobe has a special and unique function, it's really important they all work together to allow us to experience our environment and the things around us. For instance, let's say the phone rings. We pick it up. We use our temporal lobe to hear our friend talking to us on the other line. Then we might look out the window and use our occipital lobe to see that our friend is standing outside with a soccer ball. We might use our frontal lobe to make a decision to go out and play soccer with our friend. And as we're playing, we would use our parietal lobe to sense how the ball feels against our foot as we're dribbling. So all in all, all of our lobes are working to help us go out and play soccer. So we learned a bunch of new facts today. Let's put them all together and make our very own brain hat. So reach into your bag, pick out the brain hat template that we gave you and the crayons. If you weren't able to pick up a bag from us, see the link in the comments below to print your very own brain hat. Let's get started. All right, let's begin. Okay, as we just learned, our brain is made up of many different parts called lobes. Each lobe has its own important function, but our brain works together and helps us do everything from walking to reading. So now that we know all this, it's time to make our very own brain hats. We're gonna begin, we have two identical halves of the brain here called hemispheres. So we're gonna start by coloring in our frontal lobe. And if you remember our frontal lobe, we called it a superhero because it does a lot of higher order cognitive functions like paying attention, planning, feeling emotions, and much more. So you can color it in any color you want. Uh, I think I'm gonna color mine in blue. Okay, up next we're going to color in our parietal lobe. Our parietal lobe is located on the top center of our brain and it allows us to experience things such as touch, pain, temperature. All right, I think I'll color that in pink. Sounds good. Our brain hat is coming along pretty nicely so far. Next, we are going to color in the occipital lobe, which again is at the back of our brain. And our occipital lobe is really important for processing vision and allowing us to see everything in the environment around us. So I think I'll color it green.
These look great so far. Next, we're going to color in the last lobe, the temporal lobe. This lobe is located right by our ears, which makes sense because it helps us to hear. But also, we learned that it's really important for memory. So I think I'll color this one in, our last color, orange. That's good. Now it is time to cut out each hemisphere of the brain. So first we can just cut around the outside. Once we are done with that, you'll see that there are some dashed lines on the brain. We are going to want to cut along those dashed lines as well. Don't forget the dashed line in the temporal lobe as well. So now to make sure our brain hat fits us, we are going to pull over the part that we just left uncut, pull it over towards the dashed line so it'll look a little bumpy, and we are going to tape it. And we'll do that for each place we made a cut. you can see better better shape for our head and our final step will be to tape the two lobes together so make sure you match up the frontal lobe with the frontal lobe this part's a little tricky <laughs> Match up our parietal lobe with our parietal lobe in the other hemisphere. And here we go. We have our very own brain hat that we can show off to all our friends. Wow, looks good. <laughs> Looking great. All right, that's it for today. Uh, we will see you tomorrow again for another Morning Mind session. Mm -hmm.